Welcome back, Spare Parts Army. I'm your average infantryman, Chris Cappy. The Chinese Communist Party has quietly become South America's largest trading partner since the year 2000, allowing them to corner strategically important lithium mines, further isolate Taiwan diplomatically, and pressure nations into following their authoritarian vision of the future. Based on World Economic Forum data, you can see trade between China and Latin America increased from 12 billion in 2000 to 315 billion in 2020. If you doubt the geopolitical importance of Latin America to China's vision of the future, just take a gander at the South American region alone, where the population of the countries combined is larger than the United States at 422.5 million people. Their GDP combined is $8.2 trillion adjusted for purchasing power parity, and together they're the world's fourth largest economy. A major global maritime choke point is located in Central America at the Panama Canal. It divides North and South America and connects the Pacific and Atlantic Ocean. About $270 billion worth of cargo crosses the canal each year, or 3% of the world's total maritime trade. Don't get me wrong, this isn't some anti-China alarmist video calling for war. I don't see China in my cereal every morning, and I'm not paranoid imagining Chinese spy balloons watching me in the sky. Uh, wait, what's that sound? Get out of here, Chinese spy balloon. Quit stealing my Amazon password and ordering all those Marxist books. Which leads us to ask, why is this region so strategically important to China's future? I think likely for the following three reasons. Secure resources like agricultural farmland to support their massive population, building facilities and military ties in case they wanted to expand their security footprint in the future, and getting the United Nations votes necessary to challenge the liberal world order that the US set up following World War II. General Laura Richardson, in charge of US Southern Command, has been warning about this vulnerability for a few years now. I think it might be even closer to 100 billion of Chinese investment in this region. I think they're playing chess. Russia is also prevalent in this region, and I think they're playing checkers. Evidence for this comes from the fact that Latin American countries are increasingly casting United Nations votes in China's favor on important issues like the war in Ukraine and Taiwan. Panama, the Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, and El Salvador changed their mind and severed ties with Taiwan and switched their recognition to the People's Republic of China. And this only happened between 2018 and 2021. We see here on this graph that hurts my public school brain that struggles to understand it, but basically it shows that some Latin American countries vote the same as China and align more and more with their foreign policy goals. In peace, prepare for war. In war, prepare for peace. From 2009 to 2019, the open source SIPRI arms transfer data reveals that China transferred a total of $634 million worth of majority military hardware to five South American countries, mainly Venezuela, Ecuador, Bolivia, and Argentina. This includes the Chinese-made C-802A anti-ship missiles that were supplied to Venezuela that can strike vessels over 100 nautical miles away, threatening billion-dollar US aircraft carrier's ability to project power. Game has to recognize game, though, because currying favor with major arms deals and economic aid used to be the United States' purview and their go-to move. It was our dang patented hat trick. Those arms deal sales do more than just send weapon systems. They guarantee that the People's Liberation Army will stay engaged through ongoing maintenance, training, and military education exchanges of officers. 121 of the Chinese-made VN4 armored vehicles complete with Norinco-made machine guns were purchased by Venezuela, and a company of eight were dispatched to clamp down on Venezuela anti-government protests recently. By many metrics, the United States is a great candidate to be best friends with the nations in South America instead of China. Demographically, they're similar, predominantly Roman Catholic or Protestant. Hey, I'm Roman Catholic. The philosophical ideas of the Enlightenment thinkers influenced Latin America much in the same way as it influenced the United States which led to many of the independence movements there. The very legal framework of many of the Latin American republics share their origins in the same Roman code of law as the US, meaning they should have much more in common with the Western world culturally and literally geographically. 
And yet the question of whether or not Latin America is part of the quote unquote Western world is still openly debated by some. The People's Republic of China continues its relentless march to expand economic, diplomatic, and military influence in Latin America and the Caribbean and challenges U.S. influence in all of these domains. An Economic and Security Review Commission reported that Chinese military leaders visited with their counterparts in Latin America 215 times between 2002 and 2019. China is now broadly seeking to reform the UN system from within. They are trying to push what's called their shared future global governance vision. Xi Jinping is spearheading this vision of future that according to him will facilitate a win-win cooperation and make the global governance system more just and more equitable. But is that really the case? Today, for better or worse, the world is increasingly becoming defined as democracies versus autocracies. In the battle between democracy and autocracies, democracies are rising to the moment and the world is clearly choosing the side of peace and security. This is the real test. And even if this is a false binary, we have to ask the question of whether some nations in Latin America will choose to ally with China and Russia instead of the United States. And we genuinely need to take a good hard look in the mirror and ask ourselves why that might be the case. When US cabinet members visit Latin America these days, all they do is talk about China. When Chinese cabinet members visit Latin America, all they do is talk about trade and investment. And well, there's an interesting contrast there. Sorry, uh, one second. Chinese spy balloon, will you please stop hacking into my Instagram and posting all of those embarrassing photos of me as a scene kid in the early 2000s? If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of 100 battles. Their close proximity to the United States allows China to gain a foothold close to the US, much like how the United States has bases in South China Sea. Now, if you're like me, you're wondering how the United States whiffed on what should have been a softball of becoming allies with their own neighbors. We need to give the devil his due though and grant that many countries in South America still remember the US history of overthrowing democratically elected governments and interventions like Salvador Alida in Chile and Juan Guarto in Brazil during the Cold War, not to mention the 1961 Bay of Pigs in Cuba where we attempted to overthrow Fidel Castro. And we can't forget the 1989 US Army's invasion of Panama. Dear CIA, can you please stop overthrowing foreign governments? It's not really working in my favor when I'm trying to explain why Latin American countries should choose to ally with the United States instead of China. And yes, I understand the irony of me saying this when I myself participated in the war in Iraq, which overthrew a foreign government. Okay, thanks, Ua. Yeesh, these actions justified or not, don't exactly help my argument and they lend credence to China's insistence that the US isn't as freedom-minded as they claim. Currently, nearly all of the 33 Latin American and Caribbean countries have established democratic governments, but there may be an opening growing for China. According to this IDEA report, half of the countries in Latin America were showing signs of erosion of democracy recently at the end of 2021, with Brazil experiencing the world's steepest democratic recession. Democracy is losing in some of the hearts and minds in Latin America, trending from 63% approval to 49% over the last 10 years. In the midst of chaos, there is also opportunity. So what was the genesis of this? It's really an important issue we've forgotten about since the Cold War ended. It all kicked off when China was allowed entry into the World Trade Organization in 2001. This meant foreign investment was allowed, their restrictions on retail, wholesale, and distribution ended, banking, financial services, insurance, and telecommunications in China were then allowed to open up to foreign investment. At the time, President George Bush said, quote, our future cannot be separated from the future of Latin America. Should I become president, I will look south, not as an afterthought, but as a fundamental commitment. Then of course 9-11 happened and the US government got OCD levels of tunnel vision in the Middle East for the next two decades. So Latin America was largely forgotten in US foreign policy, giving a huge opportunity for China in all of the chaos. Much like how I imagine we'll get ultra focused on Eastern Europe for the next decade and forget everywhere else again. Without US leadership, negative PRC influence in this region could soon resemble the self-serving predatory influence it now holds in Africa. 
Xi Jinping is using these relationships and influence to pursue his geopolitical goals like isolating Taiwan and bolstering not only his own authoritarian regime, but others as well like Putin and Russia. He will win who knows when to fight and when not to fight. But don't take my word for it, just look at what China is saying themselves about their intentions to us. The 2008 and 2016 Chinese policy white papers that are publicly available online outline China's stance towards Latin America. Beijing's 2015 defense strategy white paper explains outright how military and other security activities are vital parts to their engagement in the region. During this time period, China upgraded their relationships with Brazil, Peru, Mexico, Argentina, Venezuela, Ecuador, and Chile to levels of comprehensive strategic partnership which is the highest rank applied to any country in the region. The airports and seaports built by China could serve as hosts to the People's Liberation Army if need be. According to a 2022 study created by the US-based National Security and Defense Think Tank, Center for Secure Free Society, SFS, the number of Chinese-owned or operated ports has increased significantly, with China's foothold being some 40 different ports in Latin America, from Peru to Mexico, combined with the 11 satellite ground stations in Argentina, Brazil, Bolivia, and Venezuela, all of this is to say it's a smart way for China to have a strategic location in the Western Hemisphere. But at the same time, they're careful to acknowledge this. The People's Republic of China is extremely reluctant to acknowledge the clearly military-related base located in Djibouti, Africa, so why would their potential bases in Latin America be any different? The SFS report goes on to say many of the Chinese state-owned companies involved in these civilian infrastructure investments have close ties to the Chinese People's Liberation Army. There are of course many factors that go into how a nation decides to vote, and Latin America has their own agency. It would be too oversimplified to say that China's increased economic and military investments holds these countries hostage. There is evidence to suggest only a few nations in Latin America are persuaded to align with China's foreign policy based on this. I don't think China is currently a military enemy of the United States. They are instead our strategic competition, and good competition should make us stronger in theory if we're able to rise to the challenge. This is my attempt to analyze China's admittedly really smart moves in Latin America and how the United States might be able to fix a massive national security problem that we've ignored. And you can't really blame Latin America for trying to increase their wealth and military technology by working with China just like North America has done in the past themselves. But they've also increased a shared vulnerability by becoming reliant on China for beef in Uruguay, copper in Chile, oil from Colombia, and soya from Brazil. Paulo Estevelite, Brazil's ambassador to China, put it this way, we'd rather not be so dependent on exports to China, but what is the alternative? It's just more profitable to sell there than anywhere else. I think a lot of business people types in North America would say the exact same thing. Is the West really losing Latin America as an ally? It was something Washington actually worried about frequently during the Cold War, but it's since forgotten like a lost strategically important sock. But great power competition is back on the menu and South America's influence is once again relevant to US interests. Sometimes I really hate that we're like the friend that only calls when we want something. Latin America's lithium triangle in Argentina, Bolivia, and Chile hold around 60% of the global lithium reserves. Lithium is critical for battery performance. According to the IEA 2021 report, without lithium, the efficiency and ability to implement renewable energy will be limited. For this reason, the element is critical to development of low carbon power opportunities and will dictate how fast the global transition to clean energy can happen. This is why the price of lithium has doubled between 2016 and 2018. As of 2022, the Chinese-based Tanquai Lithium Corp is the second largest shareholder in Chilean lithium, the world's leading lithium producer with a total of 25.9% of the shares. There are also strategically important minerals that were once just as valuable as the next rock. The world is looking to pivot to clean energy. From 2018 to 2020, China invested 16 billion in foreign mining, including South America. 
Dear Pentagon, Xi Jinping is currently building infrastructure that has dual civilian military use in Latin America right now and attempting to corner the valuable lithium resources in Argentina. Also, please stop those Chinese spy balloons before they even get close to us next time. And can we do something about all of that before I reluctantly pay my taxes this year? K thanks Hua. So how does Xi Jinping attain this leverage for China? It sounds like an easy question, but it gets complicated and brings us to a moral gray area that I want to explore because to be fair, According to a World Bank report, China's Belt and Road Initiative could help lift 7.6 million people out of extreme poverty and 32 million out of moderate poverty globally, and boost trade by up to 9.7% for the participating countries. If China didn't bring some real benefits and value to these Latin American countries, then this would be an easy challenge to solve, and we won't get anywhere ignoring the places where they have an advantage. The supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. Fighting for soft power in Latin America rages on the communications front as well. Juan Pablo Cardinal wrote a great paper for the National Endowment of Democracy on China's foreign policy in Latin America. He uncovered how China is working to influence perceptions about China through their reporters and opinion leaders by Xi Jinping's announcement that he made in 2016 in Chile to train 500 Latin American journalists in the next five years. Juan Cardinal points out how the term training might be misinterpreted by the Western world, where to us it means to make them proficient and skilled at their job. In China, media training means free public relation trips to China that follow a pro-government agenda. Democracy doesn't die in the dark, it dies in a sunny, beautiful, all-expense-paid vacation to China. Furthermore, another major part of China's strategic decision to increase engagement in Latin America is their concerns over food security. The research paper Chinese Land Grabbing in Argentina and Colombia, written by Elisa Ponia, starting in 2008, China focused on these two countries because of their total agricultural area. 141 million hectares in Argentina and 43.8 million in Colombia. China considered what would happen if the US food producers decided to prohibit their exports and so from their perspective, they were driven to secure the necessary agriculture to feed their population. As is often the case with these deals, China then writes a clause into their agreements to import their own labor force for production of food products that are exclusively sent to China. This prevents the local people from seeing an increase in jobs or wage payments or market supply chains. In many ways, China sees Latin America as more important to their survival than the United States does. The supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. One place where competition between the US and China is most fierce is in Brazil, which is Latin America's largest defense spender. They accounted for more than 40% of Latin America's total military spending over the past few years. In 2019, Brazil's defense expenditure was $26.9 billion, one of the signature institutions via which China-Brazil international cooperation has become more formalized is what's called the BRICS partnership. BRICS brings together Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa to address global concerns of mutual interest. The giant Chinese company Huawei supplies the Brazilian telecom sector, which acts as a rival to the US sphere of influence. The US recently asked Brazil and many other countries around the world to outright ban Huawei, which has been accused of having backdoor access, basically making them an arm of China's intelligence agency. I've said this before and I'll say it again, the United States is failing in one area, communications, which is clearly explaining why protecting freedom of press, protecting freedom of speech, and protecting the civilian control of military are fundamental to human rights and liberties. There are two distinct worldviews that are competing with each other for how the future will look. Sure, that might be a reductionist view of world affairs, or maybe it's distilling the many complicated factors down to the most important points. Our brothers and sisters throughout the Americas, both North and South, will have to ask ourselves, do we want to sacrifice freedom of press, freedom of elections, however messy they might be, in favor of a more equitable outcome led by an authoritarian country like China? These deals have expanded Beijing's diplomatic and military presence right into the United States' own backyard, while everyone is distracted by other spicy news stories like Chinese spy balloons awkwardly hovering over the continental United States. I spent a lot of time talking about what China's doing, but I want to say I believe we should look within for the solution here. We need to be more competitive in order to regain better relations with South America. 
Due to the fact that there are no major interstate wars or state rivals in that region, there have been less urgency to allocate resources and military personnel there. It's understandable, but at the same time, the US should be engaging more in regions that don't have any major state armed conflict. To the degree that the democracy versus autocracy worldview is true, this means we're competing in several different areas all at once, including military, economic, political, and media communications. We ignore our neighbors in Latin America to the benefit of China and Russia. These are obviously my US bias points of view. I admit that, and I hope I spark some interest in you to dive deeper, to do more research on this topic on your own. If that's the case and you found some interest in this video, then maybe I've earned your like and subscription. Thank you for watching Spare Parts Army. I'm your average infantryman, Chris Cappy, over and out. We've got inflation, Afghanistan, Russia, China, Iran. Okay, what's the plan? We're doing all we can to screw up the world as fast as we can. Seems like that's the plan.